Okay, I uh, saw recently uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, and um, I watched a 3D film. I went at night, so I ended up paying like $16.50, and I saw it in 3D. And um, one of the parts of the film that stuck out most in my mind, probably one, for me one of the better parts of the movie, was the uh, battle between the, U the USS Enterprise and the uh, USS Vengeance. Uh, number one, uh, I would have kind of felt a little bit better if the Vengeance had been named the uh, Reliant, even though I, I guess J.J. Uh, Abrams didn't want to go that route, but I thought that would have been kind of cool uh, as in a homage to uh, Star Trek II. You know, considering everything else they did in homage to Star Trek 2. But um, there was another guy online who posted a video about the warp drive battle between the Enterprise and the Vengeance. Now, aside from the fact that I personally don't believe, uh, you know, based on even the science, like when you look into the facts of this, I, I, I don't believe that, number one, there's enough energy in the entire universe to carry on a warp drive battle number one needless to say i don't even believe there's enough energy in the universe to carry on warp drive but it is theoretically possible so it you know there's always a possibility somebody will build a warp drive but i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon but there's definitely not enough energy possible to carry on a battle like that but the thing that I wanted to uh, talk about was the fact that I don't believe that um, a lot of people who've, you know, seen Warp Drive and effects in these movies, you know, completely understands what Warp Drive is. Basically, Warp Drive creates a bubble around the ship, and the ship is basically completely isolated from the effects of space-time around it. Um, imagine yourself standing on a carpet, and when you're standing on a carpet, you pull the rest of the carpet towards you, but you don't actually move. So that would mean that everything in the room moves towards you as you pull the carpet and you, you uh, reduce the amount of space between you and something else, but you don't actually move. So if you imagine warp drive being that way, that's pretty much how science says that warp drive is supposed to work. The ship stays in an isolated bubble, and space-time and everything else in space-time moves towards you, rather than you moving towards it. So you don't actually move when you're at warp, space moves towards you. Now, given that as um, how science says warp drive would work, then that would mean that the warp drive battle between the Vengeance and the Enterprise wouldn't take place in the way that it did, simply because both ships wouldn't be moving at all, but space-time would be moving towards both ships. Now, when you think about it in those manners, you say, well, if that's the case, then those ships would have to be probably in close proximity to each other and moving at the same amount of speed, which is zero, they're not moving at all. Space-time is moving towards them. So, these ships would, they wouldn't really be moving past each other. They wouldn't have to move past each other because they're not moving at all. If you understand what I'm saying, what I'm basically saying is the ships are not moving relative to one another, but space-time is moving towards them at beyond the speed of light. And that's part of the reason why I don't believe Warp Drive could even possibly exist the way the movie shows it. Because could you imagine how much energy it would possibly take to make space-time move towards you at three and four and five times the speed of light? Because Warp Drive is not supposed to, Warp Drive is not light speed. Warp Drive is exponentially increasing warp speed. And as you know that in these uh, Star Trek films, the maximum warp you could possibly go is warp 10, and warp 10 is considered infinite velocity. If you could move at infinite velocity, that would mean that you could get from any one point to any other one point in space instantaneously. So that would mean that, like in the movie, they show how somebody teleports from Earth all the way to the Klingon homeworld instantaneously. Well, technically, that's creating like an Einstein-Rosen bridge or a wormhole. So... In the first Star Trek movie, they showed somebody creating a wormhole, and it, they had the wormhole effect, and they had to fire, like, the phases or something at an asteroid in order to get out of it or whatever. But 
instant velocity would be you moving instantaneously from any one point to any other point in the universe. And if we were to believe, you know, force equals mass times acceleration, then that would mean that you would need an infinite amount of force to move any mass, any amount of mass, infinitely in acceleration and that's why i just don't believe that warp drive could possibly exist the way they show it now oh sure that you know i'm pretty sure that there's exceptions to the rule i'm pretty sure that um because that's the beauty about science science says you know it's possible that something could happen but until i actually see it it's not real or it doesn't exist because a device like that would suck down so much energy it just wouldn't be possible to do it. I, I believe that more likely making a wormhole would probably be more possible than actually moving space-time itself towards ships the way warp drive is supposed to work. But, um, you know, if anybody has any other ideas about it, you know, feel free to comment or whatever. But I, I personally don't believe, based on what I've read and what I've seen, you know, as far, if you believe in force equals mass times acceleration, or you believe that energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, then you would understand what I mean when I say I just don't believe this is possible. So, you know, if you have other ideas, you can feel free to comment.